Hi guys, welcome to Polaris Bushcraft. Um, so we are here in the woods today to have a little chat about animal tracks and signs. So when you're in the woods with your friends, you often make quite a lot of noise because you're excited to be there, you're racing each other or whatever, chattering away. So the wildlife tends to move off ahead of you um, and you end up in this little bubble as you move through the woods that it seems like there's no wildlife around. But if you know how to interpret the signs that you can find laying around in the woodland, you know what it is that's disappeared, uh, disappeared before you and going to be coming back once you've gone. So there's a few different signs that animals leave behind. If we think about um, an animal passing through the environment, it's going to potentially leave footprints if the ground's soft enough. We also might find fur or feathers. We might find sign of what they've been eating, their food, and it makes sense that if they're eating in the woods, then they're probably pooing in the woods. So we may also find scat, um, which is what we call animal poo. Okay. Um, obviously, if animals live in the woods, they also die in the woods. So you sometimes find skulls and bones and bits of animals as well, um, which can obviously be a really specific clue as to um, the age of the animal as well as just the species um, that, that you found. So if we start off with footprints, um, there's a few main types that we're likely to see. So um, at the top of the board here, we've got a fox and a dog. Now, dogs are not very interesting in as much as they're usually with or tied to humans, and we kind of know what humans do anyway. Um, so we're not too interested in dogs other than wanting to be able to eliminate them most of the time. Um, whereas foxes are obviously wild creatures. They're, they're out there doing wild stuff chasing, hunting, killing, digging stuff out. Um, so they're a bit more interesting. Um, uh, so we want to be able to tell the difference between a fox and a dog. Now, dogs' feet come in different sizes, obviously, because you've got dogs that fit in handbags and you've got dogs the size of donkeys like Great Danes. But the shape, there's some general rules to it, okay? So if we look at a fox's foot, if we imagine a perfect X over the middle of a fox's foot, we find that the pads are in quite an oval shape and two of them will fit in the front of the X, the outer pads will fit in either side and the palm pad which is this bit here will fit in the bottom. With a dog this doesn't work because of the way the pads are grouped, your lines will, will, will go through the palm pad or won't fit between the toes. The other thing is this gap here, there's a gap between the back of the front two toes and the front of the outer toes. This is a little bit exaggerated on the drawing, um, it may appear a bit closer than that but if there's an overlap and the outer toes are actually in front of the back of the inner two toes, again, we're going to be looking at a dog's foot, okay? Uh, the other domestic animal that looks a bit similar is a cat. Cats are very small and light and they seldom leave footprints really. Um, but cats have retractable claws. So when they're walking, relaxed, you won't see any claws. With dogs, their claws are always out, they can't hide them, so you'll see them. So you wouldn't mistake a cat for a small dog. The actual shape is a little bit different as well. Um, the other one that we might see in the woods with um, toe pads and, uh, and claws, a pawed foot, is a badger. Now badgers are really interesting animals. They um, have lots of habits a little bit like humans. So they tend to have a main set, but then they'll have auxiliary sets that they visit. And when a female badger is too old to have young, she'll move out into an auxiliary set so she can avoid the noise of all the... Uh, all, all the male badgers showing off and the children playing and she'll have a nice little retirement home uh, somewhere nearby. They drag their bedding out on sunny days and dry it so if you find a, a hole that you think is a badger hole and there's a load of hay or plant material just outside, if, uh, if it's the afternoon, if you retire you might see badgers coming back and pulling it back in because they like to get it out in the sun to warm it and air it and get all the bugs out of it. Uh, and they dig toilets so they dig little loos called latrines about the size of your cupped hand and they poo in those regularly so um, badgers are really interesting animals and we see lots of activity in the woods from them and they have got really long front claws so it's really easy to recognize a badger track the toes are much more in a line than a fox or a dog they have actually got a fifth toe which is their thumb but because like us it's on the side of their foot unless they're leaning in like this or the ground's very soft you often don't see the, the fifth toe so you, on the front foot you get four toes with claws that are even longer on the back foot the claws are a little bit shorter um, but they're still quite distinct and you still get this, this shape and this wider palm pad. Um, now our biggest mammal is a red deer. If you should have red deer in the woods near you they'll leave deep prints because they're heavy animals. Um, but all of the deer have a similar shape foot, it's just the size that varies hugely. So a red deer track will be about this long, uh, a fallow deer track gets a little bit smaller 
In fact, that's a fallow deer's foot, so we can see red deer's about this big, fallow deer's a bit smaller. And then the very smallest one, the muntjac, a baby muntjac might only be as big as his thumbnail. They're tiny little uh, footprints, but a typical adult will be about this long. So deer footprints are, it's a cleated foot, so it's a hoof, okay? Uh, and it's in two halves. So essentially, a deer is really walking on a highly adapted middle two fingers, and the hoof is their fingernail, and on the larger species, you can see the toe pad, or the finger end, if you like, in the back of the hoof, and then it obviously looks like an upside down heart shape coming to points at the front. Um, so that's deer, and we'll have a, another look at some uh, deer feet in a minute for a better look. And the other strange one that we sometimes see is what looks like um, two footprints out wide and then two close together and then two out wide and then two close together and they're very very faint footprints you can't see claws you can't see pads and that is a rabbit and rabbit's feet are furry all over the bottom so there are, although there are toe pads and claws in there they don't show up in the surfaces at all you might see a faint claw on a very very soft bit of clay or something but apart from that you just get a depression and when rabbits hop along their middle two feet actually end up behind their back two feet so their back feet come past so you get this funny track of two front feet together and then two back feet out wide and then two front feet together often shows up um, just in really muddy patches but you see it loads in snow and you realize how many rabbits there are around and how they where every you can see everywhere that they've been hopping around with this funny little uh, they almost look like when you see them y shapes little y shaped tracks so that's footprints the other thing that animals leave behind a lot of um, is poo or scat so if we're looking around in the right places in the woods we're always going to find um, signs of animal scat so most of you i would imagine are familiar with what rabbit poo looks like but i shall just quickly show you in case you're not so rabbits are not native to this country they were brought here for food our native animal of that type which they're called lager morphs our native lager morph is the brown hare so this, this is rabbit poo. And hares are like rabbits. They're big, um, they're faster, and they live above ground. But other than that, in appearance, they're similar to rabbits and their digestion is very similar. So the big one here, at the front, this is a hare poo. Okay, which we can see is paler and quite a lot bigger than the rabbit poos. So hares live here in the woods and they like to just have a little scrape in the leaves and they just hide in that its proper name for it is a form and they'll scrape a little hollow and then they'll lay there and fold their ears back and their, their um, coloration on the brown leaves makes them almost invisible until they run away so when you're walking through the woods you sometimes find you get very close to a hare and it suddenly gives you a start and off it goes um, so that's rabbits we also get lots of deer poo in the woods. Now deer poo is similar to rabbits in that they're both herbivores, so if you to break it up it's obviously plant matter, but deer poo is a different shape. So rabbit poo is very round, deer poo is a lot more teardrop shaped. So this is a fallow deer pellet, and when deer are uh, moving through the woodlands, they're not like us, they don't have meal times, they're constantly browsing, then resting, ruminating for a bit, chewing the cud, browsing some more. So they drop pellets everywhere, sometimes singularly and sometimes in clumps. But all deer pellets are teardrop shaped and the sizes vary in accordance with the size of the animal. So um, we can see on that little one, there's points at both ends. So we've got a more ovate shape with points at the end, okay? This is a roe deer poo. And then alongside that, I have got a fallow deer. And this is the red deer. So we see the red deer is much, much bigger than the others. The fallow is quite a large animal, and that is quite a large pellet. And then we've got a row pellet. Now, all of these have dried out, so they would have been at least 10% bigger when they were fresh. And they're, when they're really fresh, they're um, shiny. And they've got a little kind of greasy layer on so you can tell when they're really really fresh because they look quite different these have dried for a long time and then the tiniest deer that makes sense 
These are tiniest little pellets. These are muntjac pellets. And we can see we've got a little clump there. So sometimes they're individual and sometimes they're in clumps. When they're in clumps, they're a bit more squashed because they've come out all together and they've still got to fit out the same hole. But they're still all made up of um, these oval shapes that you can see as they were moving through the intestines. You can imagine a line of little oval shapes pinched off in between and then if they come out in a clump, then they get a bit squashed together. So that is muntjac poo. Now, we've already said badger poo is in little holes and I haven't collected badger poo because it's always wet. Okay? So badgers eat a lot of earthworms, so their poo is really dark and smells really earthy. Um, but the giveaway is where it is. Only once ever have I seen a badger poo in the middle of a track, not in a hole, and he had been eating lots of rowan berries and has obviously got the runs from eating too much fruit. So most of the time they're going to be in these little toilets. They dig them all around the edge of their territory to use as territorial markings, and they also tend to have a lot on top of the set. Uh, and it's not uncommon for the uh, latrines to cause elder bushes to end up growing on top of the set because badgers like elderberries and when they poo in these latrines again and again they obviously deposit lots of elder seeds on top of their set so most old badger sets have got elder bushes above them um, which can be helpful if you're looking for them so we've looked at lots of herbivore poo okay but we've also got carnivores in the woods so our top predators in the woods we've got foxes we have um, got the birds of prey but we've also got Corvids, so crows, magpies, jays, they're all predators given the chance and they'll happily have a mouse. So we will find poo and we will also find pellets. So if we start off with poo, if we think about um, fox poo or any animal for that matter that eats meat, any larger mammal that eats meat, bones are not good for the intestines. So what we get with a fox poo is we get twisted fur on the outside with all the sharp bits in the middle. So it looks a bit like a dog poo, except that it's all twisted and there's fur on the outside and um, the, any bones will be sticking out from the middle. Okay, so fox poos are quite easy to spot. Now, this one has seen better days. You can't really tell that shape anymore because it's fallen apart, but we can tell the content. So there's lots and lots of fur in there and then bones in the middle of the furry bits. Now, this was a tight, twisted sausage shape, as you'd expect, when I collected it. Now, if you find fox poo in the woods, I'd recommend you stay away from it. It's smelly, horrible stuff. It's got tons of different bacteria in. Not all of them um, are as harmless as the ones in deer poo. So deer poo, you still want to wash your hands before you eat your sandwiches, but fox poo, just don't touch it, okay? Um, that said, I'll be washing my hands afterwards, and this fox poo and I have been acquainted for about five years now, so it's probably not as, not as potentially unpleasant as it once was, but it's also not the shape that it should be. So that kind of material, but in tight, twisted sausages, okay? Now, very similar to that is this. But this is completely different. This is from a bird. So this is an owl pellet. And the difference between this and a fox poo is this will originally be in one big clump, and they start to break down in the weather quite quickly. But there's less material there, and the bones are much, much finer. So this will be shrews, um, and mice and little uh, bird bones but it's um, a more delicate thing than a fox scat and usually left um, either on top of a post or somewhere where the bird's been roosting or perhaps under a favourite tree so you can kind of tell foxes are territorial and they like to poo right in the middle of tracks and on high things so they'll balance on a tree stump just so they can get their poo up high and everybody knows they've been there um, Whereas owls will tend to be either sitting up in a tree and the pellet will be brought up out of the mouth and fall down near the base of the tree, or I have found them stuck on posts where the owl's obviously been perched on a fence or on a post. Okay, so owl pellets are much, much smaller bones. Um, they don't smell awful. Fox poo stinks. If your dog should roll in it, um, then in the woods, then you'll be familiar with the smell. Uh, it's really, really quite unpleasant, whereas pellets are not so. Um, so we've had a look at poo, we've had a look at footprints. Um, now, we've also got the stuff that animals eat, so pine cones are a good thing to look for if you've got pine trees around. So squirrels love them and will leave them all raggedy, and if you, look, if you know how, you can tell whether the squirrel that ate the pine cone was left-handed or right-handed, because they do have a dominant side, just like us. Um, mice will also eat these, so will birds, um, and there's ways of telling when you look at the different cones. So really, really neat cones, like this here been incised usually by a mouse. The more raggedy mess here 
looks more like a squirrel came along and fed on this cone afterwards and the bit at the end that's been untouched um, shows you what the scales did look like. So we can look for pine cones and squirrels typically leave a pine cone with a spiralling pattern and lots of long tufts from each scale and that's what you can use to interpret whether it was left or right handed squirrel that ate the pine cone and they like to leave them up high so on tree stumps, on fence posts and things if mice have been nibbling them, they'll usually drag them under cover so they don't have to worry about being spotted by a fox or an owl. So under tree stumps, under fallen trees and little holes like that. Um, the other thing that lasts a long time is nuts. So we get lots of hazelnuts in the woodland, but we also get walnut trees, we get acorns, we get sweet chestnuts. So there's lots of different nuts around for you to look at. And we get little holes in nuts. They're usually made by mice because they're too small to break them open. Nuts that have been eaten by squirrels are usually split straight in half. So this is a hazelnut that's been nibbled into by a mouse. Whereas this one here is a walnut, which is quite a bit bigger. Oh. And it's been split clean in half because a squirrel has got a big enough mouth to just get top and bottom and split it right open. So nutshells split in half are usually squirrels. The little neat holes are usually mice. Um, if you should find one wedged in the bark of an oak tree, and smashed open or jaggedly, then that could be um, a woodpecker or it could be a nut hatch. So birds will eat nuts as well. Okay. Um, we find lots of feathers in the woods, especially where something's been killed. So when we arrived here today, we came across this, which is a spotted woodpecker who's obviously been a victim of something, um, which is quite unusual. Could be that it was um, not successful predation but an animal that had died and then been fed on by a fox because foxes are scavengers we're uh, we're not too sure but the slime on here looks a little bit foxy to me these are buzzard feathers which are quite common in our woods here quite pretty okay and we've got a pheasant feather here now pheasants are often killed in the woods by other animals um, as are pigeons and a lot of the kills that you find are pheasants or pigeons if a fox gets a bird it's slobbery and the feathers are all slimed together like they've got hair gelling or something okay if it's been plucked by say a buzzard then what you'll find is where the buzzard's beak pinched on it will weaken the feather quill and if you hold it by the end and push on it you'll spot a weakness like that where it will willingly bend and that's where the sharp edges of the beak actually pinched on the quill as the buzzard or the other, other raptor was pulling the feathers out to then get to the meat okay so foxes pull feathers out as well, but they tend to bite through them a bit, tear them out a bit, and slobber all over them. Birds obviously are a little bit neater. Okay, so the last thing we'll quickly look at is a few skulls that you might find in the woodland. So a very common one is this. So this is a deer skull, and deer have got these big eye sockets, and then they've got a big olfactory, big sink gland in front of that, so they look like they've got two eye sockets. We've got the antlers, which is obviously a dead giveaway that this is a deer. And this is a muntjac, so these are very, very common throughout England now, all the way up to Scotland. Um, Escape from the Duke of Bedford's estate in the 1920s, and because they're small, they can use quite small cover, and they have bred very successfully and are everywhere now. This slightly bigger one is a roe deer, so for any of you uh, that are familiar with Packard Camp, Scout Campsite, there are quite large roebucks wandering through there in the winter time who then get scared off when you guys all get brave and come out camping in February. Um, but I've seen quite large roebucks sneaking past behind my teepee when I was camping there a few years ago helping uh, set up before the scouts arrived. So roe deer are one of our two native species, the other is the big red deer. So if your ancestors were here 10,000 years ago, this is uh, what they'd have been hoping to get when they went out hunting. Okay. And the last two we'll look at, very common skulls to see, and the difference with them, the longer, narrower one is a fox, and the bigger one is a badger. And if you find a fox's skull that's completely white bones and clean, and ro everything's rotted away in the woods, you'll find that the jawbone drops off, they're not attached, okay? So, um, obviously the teeth are a clue with any skull, we can tell this is a meat eater from the teeth, even if we only had a bit of the jawbone, but because we've got the whole thing we can tell it's a fox. With a badger, they've got a bony hinge on the jaw here, so when you let go of a badger's jaw, it stays attached to the skull, and that's because they've got a very strong bite, so they need that extra reinforcement. So, shorter snout, um, broader head. We've got two big holes in the front, 
and that's because badgers live 18 hours a day underground and when they do come out it's dark so their nose is the most important thing this is where the big nerves from their nose go to their brain to give them all that scent information we've also got this big crest called a sagittal crest on the top of the skull and on big males this gets um, more pronounced than on females this is where the jaw muscles attach and gives them this very powerful bite that can rip open logs and find bugs and insects and stuff. So, hopefully, that's a few little things that will help you decipher what you find when you're wandering around in the woods. There's plenty more stuff you can look at. Animal homes is another good place to start. So, nests, holes in trees, strange flat patches in the grass. Um, but that's something to get you started, so I hope that's been useful.